Hi, this is Larry Troca, and today we're going to do a review of a horse that uh, we sold not too long ago. Uh, I'm going to specifically talk about his stops and his turns, his lightness, uh, the way he travels, the way he works in general, and I'm going to break it all down so you can use the same techniques to maybe improve your horse's performance. Um, I think you're going to find it pretty darn helpful. All right. All right. So that stop, um, pretty darn nice stop. And this really isn't a trained reining horse. Um, he's trained to work cattle, but he's never had a concentrated, uh, big time stop put on him. This is something that I did in about 10 minutes worth of work. Uh, you know, but now don't get me wrong. That's not going to be that way with every horse, but it was that way with this horse. It was real easy to teach him to drag his butt. Let's go back and watch that, that stop again. Yeah. Notice my range. Okay, that wasn't, he didn't stop because I, you know, pulled him real hard or that I gave him a big old, you know, big pull. That was basically uh, set the bit and release. You notice the reins are slack here. And if we go back... I'm building speed as I'm approaching the stop and I'm going to stop him when his hind end is in the air and on the way forward. So he's getting ready to roll over his lead front foot here. And as soon as he does, his hind feet are going to be in the air. And that's when I'm going to say, whoa, and ask him to stop. Um, let's go forward a little bit. And here you can see the reins are totally slack. Um, the other key factor is look at, look at my body position while we're stopping i'm sitting on the cheeks of my butt shoulders over my hips legs are relaxed you know if you stiffen up if you stiffen up your body when you ask for the stop you're not going to get that good of a stop so this part of the stop all right you can see he's still loose up front his shoulders are still loose he's not bracing uh for the stop you, you know whenever they stop some horses will prop their front legs, you know, real stiff. And we don't want that. We want them to stay loose up front so they can immediately roll back and turn and stuff. And you notice he's given to my hands, even though the reins are pretty loose right here. Um, you know, his, his jaw is relaxed. His mouth is relaxed. And I've got a really short shank bit on him. I mean, there's not much leverage there. Um, he, just, he doesn't need it. You know, he can get by with a mild bit. I really like that his tail's dragging on the ground here. All right, let's go on here. All right, so right here, right here, you know, he's working the flag right here. And very similar to the way he would work a cow, a live cow. It was just easier to video. We, we videoed this with my iPhone 10, believe it or not. <laughs> it turned out pretty good, considering it was done with, with just a phone. Um, but you can see, you know, he's got some intensity, uh, uses himself pretty nice, and he hasn't been really tuned up much. Uh, matter of fact, I, I think he's, he's only been worked like this maybe, I don't know, four times in the last four years. All that looks good. Notice the way I'm sitting on the cheeks of my butt, legs relaxed. You know, let him off right there. I love the way that looks. His ears are up. He's got that bright look on his face. Um, yeah, I really like that look. And we quit right then because he'd done enough. A big mistake that people make is by overworking their horse too much, uh, drilling them too much, whether it, that's, you know, dry work, like stopping and spinning, or on the cow. You know, when you get something good done, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty nice. You quit right there. You just don't, you know, keep doing it until the horse is sick of it, you know? Uh, so we just worked, you know, for a couple minutes here and quit. It was good enough. All right, let's go on. And this is the way, all right, this is relaxed way this horse is traveling, you know, nice level top line, you know, he, he's just relaxed. He's, you know, it's just a good picture. I like that look. 
And here we go. I got him in frame, bridled up. And a lot of people, they skip this. Let's go back for a second here. So a lot of people, you know, they'll skip getting their horse uh, flexing at the pole, given to their hands. And it's really important that, that you can get them to do that. And then we're loping. And you notice we're loping on a nice loose rein. He's got a level top line. He's relaxed. Yeah, I like that. So when I ask my horses to stop, you know, I quit riding. Basically, I quit asking them to go forward. My legs go, go totally relaxed. Watch, watch the movement of my legs as we lope by here. You notice I'm giving him a little squeeze with each stride. That's to let him know, you know, keep loping at that speed. I, you know, I want, le I want speed control via my legs. So if I want to speed him up, I increase my leg pressure, uh, increase the intensity and timing of it. And if I want to slow down, you know, I ease up on my legs. See my legs? Touch, release, touch, release, touch, release, touch, release, touch, release. It's all in time with this stride. I'm getting ready to stop him. Now watch, I'll build up a little speed. I'll accelerate and then ask for the stop. Okay, so that's a big thing. That acceleration into the stop is what gets them to really drag their butt in the dirt, okay? If you ask a horse to stop when he levels out or slows down, you're not going to get nearly as good a stop. And you'll see that here after I turn. Now watch, now pay attention to how this horse turns. I mean, I barely have to touch the reins. And ideally, that's the way you want it. Pick up the reins. So as soon as I touched the reins, as soon as I picked him up, did you see him give his head immediately? You know, that lightness. If you want your horse to work well, it's got to be that way. Going to the lope. Now this stop's not going to be as good because I let him level out uh, instead of accelerate into the stop. You'll see the difference. See, not nearly as good a stop. Not nearly as good because I let him slow down as we were stopping. So you're not going to get his butt driving up underneath him, you know, when you do that, you know. It's just, it's not going to be as good. And it's fine to do this. You know, you, you don't want your you don't want your horse to kill himself every time you ask him to stop. You know, you'll you'll sore him up. Uh, so yeah, you save the really hard stops for once in a while, but most of your stops are going to be mild like this. All right, let's move on. All right, now pay attention. We're, I'm going to rein him here. Pay attention how my hands separate the movements. There's a rein release a rein and release a rein and release so watch use the reins to stop him release back him up release turn release accelerate use my reins to stop release back up release turn and all that is touch release touch release touch release now the way he's turning around here this is a cutting horse turn his front, his front end is crossing under instead of crossing over like a reining horse, okay? Reining horse can spin fast because he's crossing over. His outside front leg is crossing over in front of his inside front leg. And so he can spin really fast. Cutting horse turn around, a lot of them will cross under, meaning he can't spin fast or he'll hit himself. You know, you watch his outside front leg uh, cross underneath the inside front leg. So that's why he's got to, he, he can spin, but it's got to be slow so he doesn't bang his legs together. Under, cross under, cross under, cross under. And all that was still done with the touch and release, touch and release. So I'm going to open the gate on him. Just to demonstrate that he'll side pass, open a gate, and all that kind of good stuff. Ask him to bridle up, get in frame. I want him to go through the gate controlled. Nice and controlled. All that looks good. 
if you'll just ride a horse correctly, use your reins correctly, time them correctly, it'll just greatly improve your horse's performance. And, you know, you don't need to be some fancy hotshot trainer to get your horse working better. If you just practice using your reins correctly and keep the timing in mind. I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you when I upload a new video. Leave your comments and questions in the comment section below the video. Oh, and don't forget to go to my website and get that free membership. It'll give you access to all kinds of good stuff. I mean, you'll learn a bunch. I'll have a link to it down below also. Okay, that's all for now. Take care.